Coming up on this edition of Base Hunters, we are checking out Barbarian in 4K HDR with lossless 5.1 sound. Stick around. All right, what's going on home theater fans and fellow bass heads? My name is Todd Anderson with avnirvana.com and you are watching episode number 10 of Bass Hunters. We are going to keep this one fast and furious. Today, we are checking out Barbarian. This has not been released on disc yet, but it is available as a download on Kaleidoscape in full 4K HDR with a lossless DTS HDMA 5.1 track. Of course, I want to give a shout out to our great friends and partners at Kaleidoscape for giving us access to this particular film. You can see right there, this is a 55.7 gig file. I've had this one in my hands for about a month and it's a good one. Before we go any further, I just want to mention that Michael Scott over at avnirvana.com has reviewed this movie in its streaming form. So if you want to get a good breakdown of the story, and the picture quality and sound quality of the streaming version of this film. There's a link right down in the description below. Click on that and it'll take you over to his professional review. All right, so let's get the scorecard up on your screen and let's not waste any time. I'm just gonna give you the first three categories. You can see there I'm giving this movie a B. I really enjoyed this one a lot. It kind of is a two-part movie. The first part is crazy. The second part gets even crazier. So. I will say this, if you haven't seen a trailer for this movie, don't watch it. And if you haven't watched this movie yet, don't watch this video, hit stop, go watch the film, then come back and give Base Hunters number 10 a viewing. In terms of picture quality, this is a delicious film with tons of dark scenes that are loaded with detail. But all in all, I think it is a very crisp image. It's loaded with detail. I didn't see any issues with banding. so. If you're a disc owner and you're looking to buy this when it eventually gets released, I think you're going to be really happy in that department. Audio wise, it's a total creep fest. There's lots of creaks and as Michael Scott said, moans of the house and all these sorts of kind of creepy details just swirling around the room. There's also a lot of ambient effects that just draw the viewer into the intensity of some of these scenes. I liked it a lot. Base wise, this one gets a rock solid A minus. It is teetering right on A territory. It has some reference and demo moments that are truly wonderful and lots of hard hitting activity right down in that 20 Hertz range to really get your subs going. I like this one so much that I actually picked out four scenes for us to investigate. They aren't tremendously long again, Spoilers are abound, so if you haven't seen this movie, hit stop. Otherwise, you're going to completely ruin it. Okay, so we are going to dive right into my favorite bass moment of this entire movie. It's not the hardest hitting, but it is my favorite. This is total reference material. You, you can see right there, this is Bass Hunters 3 in the script file. Of course, if you own this movie on your Kaleidoscape server, there is a link to a script file that I've created right down in the description below. Just download that and you can watch these scenes as I've queued them up right in the comfort of your own home. For you disc and digital fans out there, this is right at the 3140 mark in the movie. So we aren't too deep into the film. And before we run a clip, let's look at a still of the spectrogram. Of course, over here we have frequency. And you can see in this particular scene, we have two distinct bands of bass that are going on at the same time. This top one here is in the 50 hertz range and this bottom one here is down in the 20 hertz range. And what I really like about this scene is that there is a consistent cadence of pulses of bass, but levels of intensity between the two bands of bass are varied and they're varied to a great effect of course, right here is around our 20 hertz cutoff. So we do have some bass that's bleeding down into the infrasonics, which plays into that feeling of uncertainty and terror in the scene. It's great stuff. So let's cue this up and give it a play.
That's just brilliant base design, wonderfully deployed and on a good system. It just really hammers home. Excellent, excellent stuff. Okay, so let's move on to our second scene. We find ourselves on script file Base Hunters 4. This is not too much further down from our last scene at 3929 in the film. And let's just call up a still real quick to describe to you what's going on. And here we see the sound design team pushes the fear button with LFE that deploys with a rhythmic kind of heartbeat. And you can see it right here. And as the scene plays out, pay close attention. You'll both see and hear the varied nature in both the timing and intensity of each of these heartbeats, which plays into the uncomfortable journey the viewer takes with the character as she plunges down the depths of this dark tunnel. Right here, this is the 30 hertz mark. So you can see that there's plenty of information down into the 20s and up into the 30s. This is nice, weighty bass. And that ties in nicely with our next LFE moment, which is Base Hunter 7. This is another scene in the movie where the sound design team uses bass to create this heartbeat sound. In this case, though, this is the hardest hitting moment of the entire movie. So please be very careful with your equipment if you choose to play this loud. So let's check out a still and talk about what you're going to be seeing and hearing. This scene starts off with small pulses of LFE in the 60 to 70 hertz range, and then it dies deep and heavy right into the 30 hertz range. You can see right here, that's 30 hertz right along that line. Right here, this is 20. So you can see there is hard hitting activity right in the 20 hertz range. Here, look at the down into the infrasonics there, right down to basically 10 hertz in my room. Whether or not you experience that in your room depends on your room and the equipment that's in it. But uh, this is just a delicious amount of hard hitting bass. And as the character that we're following falls into this caged hole, the tenor of the entire scene flips as the bass attack lessens. Panic and uncertainty is still palpable, but the change in bass definitely helps to transition the scene into a moment of relative security. And that scene is totally worth another look on the FFT analyzer just to see where the peak energy lies. So what we're about to see is plenty of peak energy in the 30 hertz range, but there's excellent variance in intensity and it pushes right down into 20 hertz and below. <laughs> Okay, so we're down to our last scene. This is Base Hunters 12. And this scene for me is worthy of an honorable mention. So a few things I want you to pay attention to as we see and hear this unfold is the bass is centered right around 40 hertz. 
but the character of each bass note, and you can see them right here, are it's distinctly different in terms of cadence and timing. As you can see, some of these pulses are more punctuated than others, and right around here is 20 hertz, and there is a little bleed on a few of these down into the infrasonics, and the end of this scene is punctuated by two bass drops that just plunge the viewer into the realms of terror. It's just great stuff. Can't get over a fucking barbed wire? And that right there, folks, is why this movie is so cool. And not only is it a terrifying storyline, but the sound design just draws you in so effectively. Hats off to the folks behind the base elements of this movie. It's a wonderful job. So what kind of system do you need to get the most out of this movie? Well, for the most part, I would say you need a pretty healthy sub array, particularly as you saw in Bass Hunter scene number seven. It is just gnarly, hard hitting bass. That is going to chew up weaker subs. So weaker subs need not apply. And bass heads out there, you're really going to love this stuff. All right, folks, that is all I have for you today. If you want to track me down, you can find me on Twitter. My handle there is at AVWoofer. And of course, you can always find me on the forum. We would love to have you come over and become a member of the AV Nirvana community. And once you're there, you can find me. My username there is my name. That's Todd Anderson. Thanks a lot. And we'll see you soon.